Hi, my name is Andrew. I'm with WeVideo, and today we'll be showing you a few tips on how to get started with your account. We'll begin with a quick account overview, and then we'll move into some of the cool features available that you can use. Once you log into your account, the dashboard will be your home screen. Depending on your role, your tab options at the top may vary. If you're an admin, you'll have the admin tab, whereas if you're a teacher, you'll have the groups tab. Students will only have the first four tabs. In your dashboard, you can also find your recent edits which are videos that you're currently working on. Hovering over each thumbnail will allow you to easily access the edit. If you select Manage Account, you will be taken to the Account Settings page. Here you can view your account details and connect to external sources. Use Storage is the amount of cloud storage taken up by your organization, which refers to media uploaded by users. Use Time is the total amount of export minutes used by all of your users when they publish videos. The Projects tab is where collaboration starts. To create a new project, simply select the blue plus icon at the bottom right. There are three different project types, personal, collaborative, and shared. Personal projects are used for solo projects that do not require collaboration. Collaborative projects allow users to view and edit each other's content. This is utilized for optimal collaboration. Shared projects allow users to access the same shared media folder within a project, however they do not have access to other users' edits. The Media tab is where you will find any content that you import or capture. If you select the blue plus icon at the bottom right, you can import media from the local storage on your device, or you can import from an external source, such as Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, and more. The Exports tab is where all finalized videos will be found. Each export will have its own unique URL and details at the bottom. Here you can download your export and many other icons. The Admin Members tab is for license management. This is where you can view user profiles and add or remove members. If you select Add Members, you will discover the five available options for adding members into your organization. The Admin Settings tab is for managing permission settings for each role. This allows you to enable or disable restrictions for external resource connection and media access. At this point, you're now ready to dive into the editor. Let's get started. Begin by going back to your dashboard and opening an edit. You can either select Create New or go into an existing edit. The section at the top right of the screen is where you can view previews of any media clips, motion titles, or transitions prior to adding them into the timeline. The timeline is this lower section at the bottom of the screen that contains all of the content in your video. Anytime you add media, captions, or effects to your video, it will be here. The blue playhead will move throughout the track and your video will be shown in the preview. The section at the top left is where you will select content to drag and drop into your timeline. The Stock Media tab is where you can find content from our Essentials Library. This gives you access to 1 million media clips of stock footage, images, and audio. My Media is where you'll access your media from within the editor. The Import icon prompts you with the same importing pop-up from the Media tab. Any content you import will be accessible within the editor and will also be saved to the Media tab. The Record icon allows you to either screen record, webcam record, or both simultaneously. The Narrate icon allows you to create a voiceover. Any of these tools that you record with will save the media directly to your media tab. Text is where you will find all of our motion titles, static captions, and callouts. The Audio tab gives you access to music and sound effects provided by Wii Video. Transitions are effects that you can apply to the beginning or end of a clip, such as fading in or out. Backgrounds offer a variety of content you can use to replace the green screen backdrop when you use the Color King tool. Now that we've covered the basics of navigating throughout your account, let's learn how to add media, captions, transitions, and other tips and tricks that you can use in your timeline. To add a media clip into your timeline, Simply drag and drop it. Let's give it a try. We're going to take this clip from our Essentials Library and drag it into the Video 1 track of our timeline. Next, let's add an image from our Media tab.
adding audio is quick and easy too. As you can see, it's very easy to add content, whether it's from our stock library or your personal media, it's a simple drag and drop. To add a caption into your timeline, go to the text tab and choose from our selection. You can preview the motion title before adding it into the timeline. Just like any other media file, to add a motion title, you just simply drag and drop it. Make sure to add it into the layer above your video track. To customize your motion title, you can double click into it to open its properties tab. Here you can modify the text, font, and color. You can also easily change the scale and positioning of your caption. Finally, let's add a transition in between our media clips. Now that we know how to add content to the timeline, let's learn how to utilize multiple layers. To add an additional layer, select the plus icon on the left side of the screen. You can add as many video and audio layers as you want. You can even customize their title. You can adjust the size of the preview to display more layers in the timeline. There's also the option to zoom in or out in the timeline with the tool at the bottom right. This allows for more precise editing when working with shorter clips. When you begin adding multiple layers, it's important to understand the concept of layering. Whichever layer is on top in the timeline is the layer that will be visible in the preview. Let's add more media to our new layer so that we can apply the picture in picture effect. To apply this effect, double click into the media clip, change its scale, and move it around. We can apply transitions to as many clips as we want, so let's add a couple to the beginning and end of this one. Let's see how that looks. You can also modify the opacity of a clip to give it the effect of transparency. This can be done by highlighting a clip and selecting to show the opacity levels. When you drag the green line, that'll change the opacity. You can select it to add more keyframes. As you can see in the preview, the transparency of the clip changes depending on its opacity level. To take layering a step further, we can use this to create the green screen effect. To create the green screen effect, drag the green screen footage into the layer above the media clip that you want to be the background. Let's use some space stock footage from our essentials library. Once you have properly placed your media clips, double click into the green screen clip to display its properties. Select the fifth tab to use the color keying tool. The next step is where the magic happens. Simply click on the dropper tool, click on the green in your media clip, and then the green screen effect instantly gets applied. Next up on our list of tips and tricks is using the Ken Burns animation or adding animations and movements to still images. The Ken Burns animation is a great effect that you can apply to images and videos. To apply this animation to a clip, double click into it to open the properties, then select the second tab to use the animation tool. First, you must select a starting point. This is where the animation begins. Next, you need to select an endpoint. This is where the frame is slowly going to animate towards.
that would look a little something like this. You don't necessarily need to zoom in or zoom out. You can also move from one side of the screen to the other. Another great way of using this tool is for creating the rolling credits effect. To do this, go to the static folder of the text tab, select end credits, and drag that in. As you can see, it does not move. Once the caption is placed in the timeline, double click into it to use the animation tool in the clip properties. We'll start by dragging the caption down here. And then for the end point, we'll choose it to be up here. Once the animation is applied, we'll see the rolling credits effect. Last but not least, let's learn how to capture content by utilizing our screen recording, webcam recording, and voiceover tools. To capture content with our recording tools, navigate back to the My Media tab. If you select Record, you will have three options. Webcam recording, screen recording, where you choose the audio source and then the screen. And you have the option to do dual recording, which is both simultaneously. It's very common for users to use the dual recording feature and apply the picture-in-picture -picture effect to their webcam recording so that it's in the corner at the top of their screen while the main background is the screen recording. This is great for recording lessons in the classroom. If you select the Narrate tool, this allows you to create a voiceover that you can then add to your audio track. Any content that you capture will be saved to the My Media tab. When you're done with your video and ready to publish it, select Finish and set the title of your export. Here you'll be able to select the resolution, choose an export destination, and modify the privacy of the video. One cool secret is that if you select audio only, you can convert any video into a podcast. When you're ready to export, simply select export and you're good to go. We hope this was enough tips and tricks to help you get started with creating content with WeVideo. Please feel free to reach out to our support team at support at if you have any questions. Now you can start creating today.